I'm Greg Mueller. I'm Chief Scientist and Vice President for Science here at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And as you can look, see, looking around, it's late fall, which means it's almost Halloween. And when I think of Halloween, not everybody does, but when I think of Halloween, I think of fungi. Throughout the ages, there's been all of these wild and crazy stories about mushrooms and how mysterious they are and spooky they are. If you read mystery novels or anything, anytime that people start wanting to have dank and dark and mysterious, they always evoke fungi, which is pretty unfair. Fungi evoke all kinds of interesting ideas. We have toadstools, right? Toadstools just emerging mysteriously out of the ground. But really, these fungi are growing in the soil, in the wood, for a long period of time. The thin microscopic filaments that make up most of the life cycle of these organisms. And when the conditions are right, they pop up overnight. But they've been there for a long period of time. And one of the mushrooms that, you know, immediately comes to my mind when I think Halloween is the jack-o'-lantern fungus. And it's called the jack-o'-lantern for two reasons. It's pumpkin orange and it glows. Now we can't see it during the daytime, but if you take the jack-o'-lantern and go into a very dark room, so dark that you can't see your hands in front of your face, and then let your eyes adapt to the dark, you'll see this green eerie glow. And jack-o'-lantern is only one of three mushrooms we have in this area that bioluminesce. So there's the jack-o'-lantern, the other common one around here is the honey mushroom. And the mycelium, this thin microscopic threads, the mycelium is what bioluminesces. Foxfire is actually the name for this glowing mycelium. And I get phone calls from people on a dark night that said, my wood pile is on fire, it's glowing. That's really just the foxfire fungus uh, growing through the wood. One of my favorite places to collect and to look for fungi is in old, abandoned, or at least not super well-tended graveyards. Because these are usually pretty much undisturbed. They've been around for a while. And you can find really great mushrooms popping in there. And there are several different mushrooms that um, give off blood-like substances. So there's the blood tooth fungus. There is... Um, the bloodfoot. There's a number of different fungi that give off kind of a, a red liquid that looks very bloody. There's no, they're not blood. They're just giving off other things, but they sure do look like blood. So there's a group of orchids called the Dracula orchids. And Dracula orchids make use of these insects that feed on fungi. And some of these Dracula orchids actually look like mushrooms. So they're actually mushroom mimics. They have the same smell and compounds they're emitting to fool the flies to come and pollinate them. Zombie ants. Zombie ants are ants when they're parasitized by certain fungi. And the fungi take control of the ant's brain. And so what will happen is as the ant is being consumed by the fungus, the first thing it does, it crawls up the tree to a leaf and then does what a death grip, basically. And it's positioned perfectly so that when the fungus then puts out its mushroom, its spore body, it's in a position that the spores can be spread as easily and best as possible. So here is a organism that is actually under control by the fungus. Very cool. One of the things always associated with Halloween are horror flicks. And so one of those great horror flicks is the blob. And it turns out the blob was actually based on a slime mold. And so slime molds are fungus-like organisms that grow out and look just like that. It looks like a big blob. You know, I get all kind of great interesting phone calls. So one morning I get to my office, the phone rings, I pick it up, and this, this woman on the other line that's pretty hysterical. She says, we woke up this morning and there was this blob on the, on the soil. It was about the size of a quarter and now it's the size of a teacup. And my husband's out there with a shotgun and he touched it and it started bleeding. 
And I said, okay, calm down, calm down. It's gonna be a slime mold. And she didn't quite believe me. She said, can my husband bring it in? I said, sure. So he brings it in. He must have got a backhoe because he brought in about, you know, three feet of soil for this little thing in the middle of it. And then I went up and I touched it and said, see this? And he goes, you touched the mushroom. Anyway, so the blob still elicit all kind of interesting responses to people. So, you know, these are just some of the cool, scary stories about fungi. But in reality, you don't need to worry about them. The more you know about fungi, the more interesting they are, but you also recognize that they're not going to hurt you unless you eat the wrong ones. And so remember, there are deadly toxic mushrooms if you eat the wrong ones. But for the most part, they're not gonna hurt you. They're actually doing great things in the environment and great things for you.